الحمد لله أنار بصائر أوليائه فغدوا أيقاظا والناس رقود أحمده سبحانه All praise is due to Allah He enlightened the insight of his obedient servants and as a result they remain awake while others may be asleep I praise Allah as he is perfect in every way and he is the most kind and magnificent I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. He is completely unique in all ways. I further bear witness that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger who will be granted the highest rank among all people on the day of resurrection. O oh Allah, grant your accommodation and protection to your messenger as well as to his family, companions and all who continue following their path. Dear people of Iman, observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling His commands and avoiding His prohibitions. And strive to be the way that Allah instructed you to be. When you do those things, Allah will be towards you just as He promised you. Respond to Allah when He calls you. By doing that, He will respond to you when you supplicate Him. When people sell their souls to Allah, he purchases them and in return he admits them to Jannah and is pleased with them. Our lives in this world are to be spent in obeying Allah consistently. True well-being lies in complying with Allah's directives. True salvation lies in constantly adhering to the Quran and Sunnah. And true success lies in being distanced from the hellfire and admitted to Jannah. Dear Muslims, Allah created people's hearts to know Him, make themselves known to Him, and be connected to Him. They are not to let anything obstruct them from Him or preoccupy them from contemplating His evidences. However, people's hearts are subject to various ailments and barriers which can divert them from the functions for which they were created and from the condition in which they should strive to be. Among the most perilous of those ailments is that of heedlessness. It causes a person's heart to be inattentive and diverts it from mindfulness of Allah and obedience to Him, such that the person's soul then does whatever it desires and the person becomes desensitized to things it should stop short of. One form of heedlessness is related to contemplating Allah's evidences throughout creation and in the texts He revealed. Those evidences are presented to the heart one after the next, yet the heart remains inattentive and it does not feel prompted to accept those things, submit to Allah, have reverential fear of Him, or be humble towards Him. Allah said about such people, whenever any of their Lord's irrefutable evidences come to them, they continue refusing to accept them. This is what happens when those evidences are presented to a heart which is heedless and which does not want to be attentive. The evidences are like rain that falls to revive the earth, but the location upon which the rain falls is flat and barren such that it neither holds the water nor produces any vegetation. A second form of heedlessness is related to matters of the hereafter, striving to attain them and preparing what is needed for them before the day comes when those who remain heedless will feel the most intensive regrets. Allah said, however, most people do not realize this. They only know the outward appearance of the life of this world and they are heedless concerning the hereafter. Such people remain focused on nothing besides this world and they do not think about anything else. Yet even with that being the case, their knowledge of this world does not go beyond its outward appearance. Their knowledge does not grasp the realities of this world which lie beneath the surface. They know about its pleasures, pastimes and luxuries, but they lack knowledge about the harms and pains which those can cause. They know that things in this world were created for them, but they do not know that they themselves were not created merely for those things. Such people end up preoccupied by the things of this world and they remain heedless about the eventual end and disappearance of those things. No matter how long they may last or how beautiful they may seem, they are still short-lived and unpleasant in reality. Servants of Allah, when the hereafter comes, they will feel remorse about what they were heedless of, but it will be too late at that time. 
Allah who is perfect in every way, instructed his messenger and warned them about the day of grief and regrets when judgment about all matters will be given. Whereas they now persist in their lack of concern, they do not have sound beliefs and they do not perform righteous deeds. On that day, some will be happy while others will end up in misery. Some will be allowed to reside in Jannah endlessly while others will be condemned to punishment in the hellfire endlessly. Those in Jannah will experience enjoyment and delight while those in the hellfire will be filled with regret and anguish. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said that on the day of resurrection, death will be brought forth in the appearance of a white ram with a grayish tinge. A caller will proclaim, people of Jannah, and they will then stretch their necks and look. The caller will ask, do you know what this is? They will reply, yes, it is death. And all of them will see it. The caller will then proclaim, people of the hellfire, and they will then stretch their necks and look. The caller will ask, do you know what this is? They will reply, yes, it is death. And all of them will see it. The ram will then be slaughtered and the caller will say, people of Jannah, you will remain endlessly without dying. And people of the hellfire, you will also remain endlessly without dying. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, then read the passage of the Quran saying, and warned them about the day of grief and regrets when judgment about all matters will be given, whereas they now persist in their lack of concern. He added that those are the heedless, all they are concerned with of this world, and they do not have sound beliefs, and they do not perform righteous deeds. This was collected by Bukhari and Muslim. Cures for the aforementioned forms of heedless include acquiring knowledge and insight about the reality of this world, giving this world the status it deserves, and not making it the complete subject of one's focus. Doing those things would prevent an individual from being completely engrossed with this world and heedless about the hereafter. There is no treatment for that besides making the hereafter one's objective and making this world one's means to reaching it. When a person does that, this world becomes fertile ground for him to sow the crops that he will reap in the hereafter. A third form of heedlessness is related to taking heed of what happened to previous peoples. There are many lessons to learn, but few who are mindful. In the Quran and Sunnah, we are only informed about those who preceded us so that we would take heed. They are not merely historical facts being cited for us to read over and not take heed. They are not just stories to engage our imagination while we ignore what they actually signify. On the contrary, they are narratives presented to be taken heed of by every person who has a mindful heart, who listens well, and who remains attentive. Allah stated narratives about people from previous times indeed contain lesson for people of sound understanding. This Qur'an is not fabricated speech, rather it is a confirmation of the truth contained in the scriptures which Allah revealed before it a detailed explanation of all things and a source of guidance and mercy for the people who have Iman. Dear Muslims, a fourth form of heedlessness, which is among the most severe, is related to mentioning Allah the most exalted. In fact, this form induces others. This form gives rise to various manifestations of losing focus and straying from what is correct. Allah instructed His Prophet to mention Him and forbade Him from being heedless. Allah said to him, Mention your Lord within yourself. That is to be done with humility towards Him, reverential fear of Him, and in a lowered voice. You are to do that in the earlier and latter parts of the day, and you must not be among those who are heedless. Thus Allah equated forsaking His mention with heedlessness. The treatment for this type of heedlessness is striving to remain constant in mentioning Allah. And this is because mentioning Allah awakens the heart from sleep. When the heart remains asleep, it misses profitable opportunities and incurs losses. However, when it is alerted to wakefulness and it recognizes what it missed while asleep, it becomes diligent from that time onwards and makes amends for what passed. Nothing awakens the heart like this besides mention of Allah, since heedlessness induces heavy slumber. Something else which safeguards a person against this form of heedlessness is what the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, mentioned in his statement, if a person mindfully reads 10 ayat, he would not be recorded among the heedless. If he mindfully reads 100 ayat, he would be recorded among those who are constantly devoted to Allah. And if he mindfully reads 1000 ayat, he would be recorded among those who attain immense reward from Allah. This is collected by Abu Dawood with a Sahih chain of narration. I say this much and I beseech Allah 
to forgive all sins that have emanated from myself and you. Thus you should also seek his forgiveness, make much mention of him, and ensure that you are not among the heedless. Allah deserves the fondest and most fulfilling of praise. I beseech him to grant commendation and protection to his prophet, as well as to the prophet's family, his companions, and all who continue adhering to his sunnah and guidance. Dear Muslims, a fifth form of heedlessness, and it is also among the most severe, is related to letting the effects of sins accumulate upon the heart. When a person does not repent from a sin, that will inevitably have an effect upon the light and clarity of the person's insight. When a person continues committing sins, that progressively leads to darkness until the heart gets rusty, just like what happens to a piece of iron. Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, When a servant of Allah commits a sin, a black spot is placed in his heart. If he forsakes the sin, asks Allah's forgiveness, and repents, his heart becomes polished. However, if he persists in committing the sin, spots would continue being added until they overcome his heart. That is the covering which Allah mentioned in his statement. The overwhelming multitude of sins those people committed covers their hearts and obstructs them from accepting the truth. This is collected by Termidhi and he graded it Hassan al Sahih. An Imam ibn Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that hearts become rusty because of two things heedlessness and sins. Additionally, the rust is removed by two things, asking Allah's forgiveness and mentioning Him. If most of a person's time is spent in heedlessness, rust will become compounded upon his heart and it will be in proportion to the extent of his heedlessness. If a person's heart becomes rusty, actual realities of things do not register in it. Thus, he would perceive falsity as truth and truth is falsity. If the rust becomes compounded, the heart blackens and it becomes covered. Its perception and recognition become corrupt and as a result it would not accept truth or disapprove of falsity. This comprises one of the worst punishments the heart can experience and its root lies in heedlessness and following disobedient inclinations. Those two extinguish the light of a person's heart and they blind his insight. Allah said, Do not admire or obey anyone whose heart we have left heedless of our remembrance, who follows his own disobedient inclinations instead of obeying Allah, and whose efforts will all end up wasted. Thus we must realize that the call that the Iman has proclaimed the call for those who take heed, and the admonitions of the Qur'an provide cure for hearts that have room to accommodate it. However, people's hearts face raging storms of misconceptions and disobedient inclinations which wipe out its light and thus leave it susceptible to the hands of heedlessness and imprudence. That causes the gates to guidance to end up closed and their keys to be lost. The heart can become covered due to sins perpetrated and as a result words end up being of no benefit to it. The heart can become intoxicated with disobedient inclinations and thus it ends up paying no attention to any rebuke afterwards. Such a person's heart may receive admonitions that pierce it even more than spearheads and arrows can pierce the body, but without any result, since the heart already died in the seas of ignorance and heedlessness and was already taken captive by disobedient inclinations and desires. Thus, no piercing wound would cause any pain to what is already deceased. In conclusion, Quote Amman, Allah's instruction, when he said to us, Indeed, Allah grants his commendation to the Prophet and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O oh Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your Messenger. O oh Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of the Prophet's family, companions, and those who follow their path until the day of reckoning. O oh Allah, we implore you to grant us well-being and protection in this world and in the hereafter. Our Lord, we beseech you for guidance, for taqwa, and for contentment. Our Lord, we implore you to grant us well-being regarding our religion and our lives in this world. 
O oh Allah, we implore you to protect us from all directions, from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left, from above us and from beneath us. O oh Allah, we beseech you to bless us to be people who remain humble and submissive towards you. O oh Allah, we call upon you, the Lord of all creation. Our Lord, we beseech you to grant us safety in our lands and to make our authorities righteous individuals. O oh Allah, we beseech you to guide our leader, the custodian of the two holy mosques, to all that you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, direct him and his deputy to all that will be best for your servants and for those who submit to you in Islam. O oh Allah, we implore you to protect those who work to protect our safety. O oh Allah, grant them your protection, safeguard them in all ways, and enable them to return to their families in a state of well-being. O oh Allah, you are the most merciful of all who show mercy. You are our guardian Lord. You are the Lord of all creation. O oh Allah, you are the one we call upon to remove from us the pandemic that we are facing. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and protect us from torment in the hereafter. Our Lord, we have indeed wronged ourselves, and if you do not grant us your mercy and forgiveness, we will indeed be among those who lose everything. O oh Allah, grant your mercy and forgiveness to us, to our parents, to those who have imparted knowledge of Islam to us, and to all of your obedient servants. O oh Allah, we beseech you for your pardon and forgiveness. Our Lord is perfect in every way, exalted above all the wrong ascribed to Him. He grants protection to all of His messengers. And the last of our prayers is that all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.